I feel like I just said the word orange weird. It's it's like my favorite font I've seen on a label in a while. I know it's kind of weird. You want to definitely test your wicks with every change in fragrance oil because fragrance oil can drastically affect the wicking. Hey everyone, today's review and testing of a subscriber's candles is coming to you from Heliconio Falls. Thank you all for being here as usual and for tuning in to this particular video. I love doing these candle reviews. Um, if you are new to this channel, my name is Wade. I'm with Black Tie Barn and obviously I run this YouTube channel as well to talk about candle making and running a candle business. If that interests you at all, please consider subscribing. Check out other videos on the channel. Like I said, we talk about business, we talk about making candles, we do demonstrations, we do tutorials, uh, tips and trick videos, reaction videos, and review videos. So if any of that interests you at all, we'd love to have you around for the future. With that being said, this is a subscriber candle review video. And if you haven't seen one before, these were sent in voluntarily. The whole point is to try to give some feedback and, and insight from someone else in the industry. Um, while I don't have expertise and experience with every single type of candle making material and product on the market, I do have a lot of experience and I hope to share some of that insight and let you know when doing these reviews, if it was me, the type of things that I would be focused on. And we're going to be doing that from a couple of perspectives. First is unboxing, taking a look at the visuals, uh, what the wax looks like, the, the color of the wax, if there is any, the jar, the label everything we can visually see. And then we're also gonna be talking about testing, how the wick performs, how it burns, the overall performance of the candle. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Before we get to the products, we have two envelopes here. And if you're new to these reviews, this is pretty common. One envelope is for us to read now, and I can share some of the information in this. It could be about the maker, about the company, products and materials they wanna share that they used, whatever they wanna share up front. Now the second one is more of a fact check uh, because throughout this video, I'll be making some guesses on what I think we're using as far as materials go, uh, the type of wax, wicks, things like that. And so this second one is the reveal at the end to see how close I was. Sometimes I'm really close, sometimes I'm not at all, but it's just a little fun to do it that way. All right, let's start with this first envelope and we're gonna set the other one aside. All right, and it's like a greeting card, this is cool. So I'm gonna read this real quickly and then I'll let you know, kind of summarize what it said. All right, cool. So this card really doesn't tell anything about the materials, which is totally fine and very, very common. This was more about how the person got started. And the maker for Heliconio Falls, is his name is Jonathan. He started during, um, during the pandemic, during the lockdown specifically. And he says that he did it as a distraction to give him something to do during the lockdown. Uh, and he really enjoyed it. And by watching other channels and resources, uh, he got more and more confident and just more interested as he went. He said even after just doing his first market, uh, he was really proud of how everything turned out and how it went. So he just wanted to continue and send these products in to have us take a look. Now these look to be about the same size or style, so it, I don't, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick one to get started. First of all, I, I wanna say that I like the simple, elegant approach of here. All right, very, very nice. Gorgeous vessel. So these vessels I've seen a few different places. Uh, Makesy or Woodenwick sells some vessels like this. California Candle Supply, I think, sells some like this. You can find them at various places. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure which vessel this is or where they got it from, but it does look very, very nice. I'm curious if the other one's gonna be black as well or white. Uh, we've got a very simple, just kind of paper-ish type label, but it looks really good. Um, I like the simple logo. I really like the font for the name. So let's go ahead and talk about this from top to bottom. You got Heliconia Falls at the very top. Um, and it says a handmade coconut soy candle wax. So coconut soy. So that's going to give us a hint of what kind of wax we're using. Now it's just a matter of figuring out which one because there are a lot. Um, and then it says sweet mandarin. So that is the name of this particular candle. I love this font. I, I have a feel like I think I know what it is, but I can't remember the name off the top of my head. But I love the font. It looks great. It's, it's easy to read, but still creative and interesting. And then it says more specifically that it's mandarin, vanilla, and orange. And then on the bottom, we have a custom warning label, which fits perfectly. It has all the relevant information and it just looks really good. Lots of information, not just about candle care uh, tips, but also about the product, about the company, uh, the net weight. And by adding a little bit more information on the warning label, they're able to keep the product label a little more simple. So very, very nicely done. Now you've probably noticed the top. Uh, no, this is not black colored dye. This is a dust cover, a black dust cover, but you also probably noticed the wood wick. So let's go ahead and start with uh, the wood wick and then we'll go back to the wax. So the wood wick is, uh, is a booster wick. You probably cannot see it in the, can in the camera, but so if you're new to candle making, new to wood wicks specifically, this is pretty common. You'll see this on a lot of natural and organic waxes or any waxes that have a higher melt point or just tougher to burn. Now this is a low melt point wax, I, I believe, but it is a tougher one, a more viscous one. So that type of wax does need a little bit more heat. And so seeing a booster wick is pretty common. Um, if I had to take a guess at the wick size, I would say it is a 0 
with a booster and it looks like a half inch, although it could be 5 eighths inch. It's tough to tell. Either way, that's my guess on the wick. The uh, wax, we know it's a coconut soy. And honestly, I think that would have been my guess anyways, just by the look and the feel of it. You, you know it's soy based, but you also notice that it's a little creamier, a little softer, a little bit more of an oily sheen to it than just plain soy. Regular soy wax can get kind of ashy and almost like a matte feel. Um, so this is either coconut or paraffin would have been my guess that is blended with it. We do know it's coconut soy. There are several though. So, you know, part of me wants to think that maybe this is coming from Wooden Wick or Makesy just because of the Wooden Wick itself. And so they sell waxes, they sell a virgin coconut soy. So it could be that. Um, I guess that's where I would lean so far just because if they're buying their wicks from there and possibly the vessel, that would make sense. However, I also said the vessel I think is sold by California Candle Supply and they sell a cow wax that's also a coconut soy. This also could be a coconut apricot wax. With these kind of waxes that are have this kind of texture and look to them, you're really just throwing something and hope it sticks. But those would be kind of my guesses. Absolutely great looking handle. I have no issues, no complaints with the way it looks. You know, the only improvement I might make on the label, which you probably do with more time, is just coming up with a better textured label. So more of a professional label, either go with a matte or a semi-gloss um, or something that's a kind of a just different professional texture in general. Whereas this feels more like paper. Um, probably something from like uh, Avery or, you know, your local uh, office supply store, something like that, but, uh, or even online labels. But, um, the look of it is great. I think everything looks fantastic. It's just a matter of as you continue to do it, maybe increase the quality of the actual label itself, the, the paper type. Other than that, looks great, smells great. I was smelling it before I had even got it out of the box. Um, those soy based candles and even some of the coconut ones have excellent cold throw. So I wasn't too shocked to notice the smell right out of the box. All right, let's go ahead and set that one aside. I love the consistency of the branding and the look everywhere. You've done a really, really good job, especially for someone who just started within the last couple of years. You're doing a really good job early on. Like I, I would say you're definitely ahead of the ball, ahead of the curve here with how quickly you've developed brand consistency because that's super, super important. Uh, when starting a business. So we've got the same product here, just a different scent, which is awesome. So I'll definitely test these both and let you know kind of which one I prefer as far as fragrance goes. But overall, these look like the same product. So I'm not gonna talk as much about the wax and wick in this one, unless I think they're different for some reason, but I don't think they are. Uh, here on this one is a white tea, bergamot, white tea and jasmine. Okay, I love bergamot, love it. And I'm a fan of jasmine as well. So I think I'm gonna really like this one too. Uh, same font, same label, everything looks great. The only thing is, is try to work on the consistency of the, where the label is placed on the jar. So you can see that they're offset a little differently. One of the labels is really high up on the jar and the other one is indented down. Um, and so I personally think it should be centered. Like the, the first one, Sweet Mandarin, I thought was in a great spot. Uh, this one's a little high up, but we're talking minor little things here, right? Like this isn't a product suggestion. This is more of a process suggestion. So uh, very nice, very nicely done. Let's go ahead and check this one out. Interesting. Okay. I was expecting to smell a little bit more bergamot. I smell a little bit more of the white tea and jasmine, yeah, although it's a really good combination. I, I don't know if this is a custom fragrance that you blended together or if this is one that was specifically already had these notes. It's pretty good though. It's interesting. It's not as strong as I was hoping it would be, it's not as strong as the Mandarin. And I personally wish there was a little bit more bergamot, but that's just personal preference. Like you, you can't make everyone happy with the fragrance notes you chose. So uh, other people probably like or appreciate the fact that there's more jasmine and, and white tea where I'm just a lemon person. I like bergamot, but it does smell really nice. Actually, this is really refreshing. I, I smell more tea in this than anything, which is cool. I, you can actually smell the tea. It's nice. Um, I'm going to assume we're dealing with the same wax here. It feels like it, it looks like it. We've got the same wick. It looks like another 0 0.03 with a booster, probably a half inch. So that's the products in a nutshell as far as the visuals. Um, I gave you my guesses on the wax and the wick and overall I'm very, very impressed, especially for the amount of time you've been doing this. They look excellent, they smell excellent. Uh, now it's time to just test these out. So let's go ahead and get to testing these and I'll let you know how it goes and provide any insight and things that I'll be thinking about why we're burning these. I am back after testing these candles sent in by Jonathan and his company, Heliconia Falls, which by the way, I love the name. Uh, the, the more I kind of saw that name and, and said it, I really like it. So great work on the name. I'd love a little bit more uh, backstory on maybe how you came up with that name. Let me know in the comments section if you wouldn't mind sharing with everyone. All right, let's talk about these two candles. The first thing I'm going to mention again is I love the sophisticated, clean, modern, elegant look of these candles. I like the black matte or semi-matte. We're going to start with white tea. 
And that one, I love the fragrance on it. I was super looking forward to that one. Uh, but you're gonna see in the footage here, I had a hard time getting this one to consistently burn well. It was wanting to tunnel a little bit. I couldn't get a melt pool to get within about a half inch uh, of, of anywhere around the perimeter of the jar. Um, so this one, and it could be the fragrance oil itself, but this one appears to need a little bit extra kick, a little bit extra heat. Now, as I talk about with every single candle that's made with wood wicks, there's a caveat here. Wood wicks can be inconsistent. By nature, it's just kind of the, the, the nature of using them. And you just got to accept that, that there is some variation in your wood wicks. Um, you might have made eight of these candles and, and six of them burned great when you tested them. And maybe this is just one that's a little bit of an anomaly. It happens. No big deal if that is the case. But if you want to test one of yours that you still have in stock that you made a while back, check it and see how it's burning. And if you're getting somewhat similar results to this one, as I'm showing here in the footage, then I would consider bumping up the wick size. We'll know here in a minute when we read your, your final letter what size you're using, but I would say bump it up uh, it, either in width or in thickness and, and give it another shot. But to me, it looks like it's a, it's a couple sizes, probably too small, at least one. Uh, but other than that, I love the fragrance. I, I like those kind of those those kind of scents in general. But let's talk about Sweet Mandarin. And you had me at Mandarin. <laughs> I knew I was going to like this candle. I like citrus. I love orange. Um, I, I feel like I just said the word orange weird. Like I strung it out like orange. Anyways, great fragrance. Love this one. Good hot throw. Um, I wouldn't say it was. Uh, you know, on a scale of, you know, one to 10, I'd probably give this like a, like an eight on hot throw. So it was definitely above average. It was really good. And this one burned great as well. At, at first I thought, uh, it might be a little bit small as well, but, uh, nope, it wasn't, uh, about three or four hours. We were getting a good solid note pool. And then the more I burned the candle down, um, it continued to perform great. Oh, and real quick, I, I need to mention the footage is, is really only showing the uh, first few burns here. One, uh, the main reason is because the results continue to be consistent as I burn the candle down. I burned them all the way down. Well, I, the white tea one, I was only able to burn it uh, maybe a third of the way down and then it, it just didn't want to stay lit. Um, it was just kind of a really small faint flame. Uh, the other one, the mandarin, I burned all the way down, leaving, I don't know, maybe about an inch in the bottom. And it, uh, it burned pretty much the exact same, every single burn all the way through, which is a great sign, by the way. Um, so great job on this one overall. You maybe, maybe could go up one size. Um, just, just because the melt pool never got like really you know, more than maybe, uh, three eighths of an inch deep, or, or I'm sorry, maybe an eighth of an inch deep. So somewhere between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch deep, you could probably go one size larger in the wick and, and still, it would still burn beautifully and maybe kick up the hot throw even a bit more, but you don't have to. Um, so that I'll leave that one up to you if you want to test that or not, but overall, it burned really, really well, and that was by far my favorite of these two candles. And just to kind of wrap up the review of these spe specific candles, I want to comment again on the on the font. I know that's kind of silly, but I love the font you chose for your labels. Great, great job. It's it's like my favorite font I've seen on a label in a while. I know that's kind of weird. And then as a reminder, you want to try to make sure your labels stay kind of consistent where you apply them on the jar. But uh, yeah, that, that's really it. There's not a whole lot to say on this one. But I want to get to this letter, though, because I might have a little bit more to say after we find out like how close or not close I was with these materials and my guesses. All right. This was the me second letter, by the way. All right. It says, hello again. Hope you enjoyed the candles. The wick is a wooden wick, a crackler booster 0 0.02. And it's a half an inch wide. And then the wax is Cal wax EC 26. Okay. So there is uh, some good information there. Cal wax EC 26 is a pretty good wax. Um, it does need a little bit extra heat though than like a, a low melt point paraffin or something, which is probably why your wick is is uh, not working out for you, at least in both candles. And then the next thing I'll say is you're using the same wick size in both of these, which for the majority of your candles might, might work out fine. But uh, if you just kind of tested one of your candles and found a good wick and then used that same wick in all of them with the different scents, um, that's not always the best approach. You want to definitely test I'm not saying you did that. Just This is just a teaching moment for others watching the video. Um, you want to definitely test your wicks with every change in fragrance oil because fragrance oil can drastically affect the wicking. For example, in this particular case, one of them burned fine and the other one, the wick wasn't enough. So if you did just apply one kind of standard wick to all of them, go back and retest each, uh, each wick and each fragrance and you might just need to adjust the size on each. Knowing that you're using EC26 and these uh, these wooden wicks, I would probably actually go up to a 0 0.03 uh, 
uh, booster wick instead of the 0 0.02. 0 0.02 works great with like low melt point, soft waxes, especially ones that are heavily paraffin based. But, uh, but in this wax, I would try a 0 0.03 and see if you get any better results. You may have already done that by now. In fact, I appreciate uh, the patience uh, after sending these in for me to get these reviews to you. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, this insight in this video and thank you for sending them in. I appreciate that. For everyone else watching this video, Thank you for watching and supporting another candle maker here in the community. Show Jonathan some love in the comment section below for uh, sending these in. If you guys like these videos and this channel in general, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. If you want to check out some other candle reviews and testing of subscriber candles, I've got a playlist for that. Or if you're interested in uh, some of the other content I've got here on the channel about running a business or making candles yourself, check out one of these videos as well. All right, guys, I'll see you all next time. Thanks.